Geography of Canada The Geography of Canada describes the geographic features of Canada, the world's second largest country in total area. Situated in northern North America, constituting 41% of the continent's area, Canada spans a vast, diverse territory between the North Pacific Ocean to the west and the North Atlantic Ocean to the east and the Arctic Ocean to the north, hence the country's motto from sea to sea, with the United States to the south, contiguous United States, and northwest, Alaska. Greenland is to the northeast, off the southern coast of Newfoundland lie Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, an overseas collectivity of France. Since 1925, Canada has claimed the portion of the Arctic between 60 degrees west and 141 degrees west longitude to the North Pole, however, this claim is contested. While the magnetic North Pole lies within the Canadian Arctic territorial claim as of 2011, recent measurements indicate it is moving towards Siberia. Covering, land, freshwater, Canada is slightly less than three-fifths as large as Russia and slightly smaller than Europe. In total area, Canada is slightly larger than both the U.S. and China, however, Canada ranks fourth in land area, i.e. total area minus the area of lakes and rivers, China is in the U.S. is. The population of Canada, some 35,151,728 as of May 10, 2016, is concentrated in the south in proximity to its border with the contiguous U.S., with a population density of 3.5 people per square kilometer, 9.1 per square mile. It is one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world. The northernmost settlement in Canada, and in the world, is Canadian Forces Station, CFS, Alert, just north of Alert, Nunavut, on the northern tip of Ellesmere Island at 82 degrees 30 and 62 degrees 19 W, just from the North Pole. Canada has a diverse climate. The climate varies from temperate on the west coast of British Columbia to a subarctic climate in the north. Extreme northern Canada can have snow for most of the year with a polar climate. Landlocked areas tend to have a warm summer continental climate zone, with the exception of southwestern Ontario, which has a hot summer humid continental climate. Parts of western Canada have a semi arid climate, and parts of Vancouver Island can even be classified as cool summer Mediterranean climate. Temperature extremes in Canada range from 45.0 degrees Celsius, 113 degrees Fahrenheit, in Mydale and Yellowgrass, Saskatchewan on July 5, 1937 to minus 63.0 degrees Celsius, minus 81.4 degrees Fahrenheit, in Snag, Yukon on Monday, February 3, 1947. Canada covers in a panoply of various geoclimatic regions. There are eight main regions. Canada also encompasses vast maritime terrain, with the world's longest coastline of. The physical geography of Canada is widely varied. Boreal forests prevail throughout the country, ice is prominent in northerly Arctic regions and through the Rocky Mountains, and the relatively flat Canadian prairies in the southwest facilitate productive agriculture. The Great Lakes feed the St. Lawrence River, in the southeast, where lowlands host much of Canada's population. The Appalachian Mountain Range extends from Alabama through the Gaspé Peninsula and the Atlantic provinces, creating rolling hills indented by river valleys. It also runs through parts of southern Quebec. The Appalachian Mountains, more specifically the Chic Chalk Mountains, Notre Dame, and Long Range Mountains, are an old and eroded range of mountains, approximately 380 million years in age. Notable mountains in the Appalachians include Mount Jacques Cartier, Quebec, Mount Carleton, New Brunswick, the Cabox, Newfoundland. Parts of the Appalachians are home to a rich endemic flora and fauna and are considered to have been nanotox during the last glaciation era. The southern parts of Quebec and Ontario, in the section of the Great Lakes, bordered entirely by Ontario on the Canadian side, and St. Lawrence Basin, often called St. Lawrence Lowlands, is another particularly rich sedimentary plain. Prior to its colonization and heavy urban sprawl of the 20th century, this eastern Great Lakes lowland forest area was home to large mixed forests covering a mostly flat area of land between the Appalachian Mountains and the Canadian Shield. Most of this forest has been cut down through agriculture and logging operations, but the remaining forests are for the most part heavily protected. In this part of Canada the Gulf of St. Lawrence is one of the world's largest estuary, see Gulf of St. Lawrence lowland forests. While the relief of these lowlands is particularly flat and regular, a group of batholites known as the Monteregian Hills are spread along a mostly regular linea across the area. The most notable are Montreal's Mount Royal and Montana Saint-Hilaire. These hills are known for a great richness in precious minerals.
states, the northeastern part of Alberta, northern parts of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec, as well as most of Labrador, the mainland portions of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, are located on a vast rock base known as the Canadian Shield. The shield mostly consists of eroded hilly terrain and contains many lakes and important rivers used for hydroelectric production, particularly in northern Quebec and Ontario. The shield also encloses an area of wetlands, the Hudson Bay lowlands. Some particular regions of the shield are referred to as mountain ranges, including the Torngat and Laurentian Mountains. The shield cannot support intensive agriculture. Although there is subsistence agriculture and small dairy farms in many of the river valleys and around the abundant lakes, particularly in the southern regions. Boreal forest covers much of the shield, with a mix of conifers that provide valuable timber resources in areas such as the Central Canadian Shield Forest eco-region that covers much of northern Ontario. The region is known for its extensive mineral reserves. The Canadian Shield is known for its vast minerals, such as emeralds, diamonds and copper. The Canadian Shield is also called the Mineral House. The Canadian Prairies are part of a vast sedimentary plain covering much of Alberta, southern Saskatchewan, and southwestern Manitoba, as well as much of the region between the Rocky Mountains and the Great Slave and Great Bear Lakes in Northwest Territories. The plains generally describes the expanses of, largely flat, arable agricultural land which sustain extensive grain farming operations in the southern part of provinces. Despite this, some areas such as the Cypress Hills and the Alberta Badlands are quite hilly and the Prairie Provinces contain large areas of forest such as the Mid-Continental Canadian Forests. The size is roughly The Canadian Cordillera, contiguous with the American Cordillera, is bounded by the Rocky Mountains to the east and the Pacific Ocean to the west. The Canadian Rockies are part of a major continental divide that extends north and south through western North America and western South America. The Columbia and the Fraser Rivers have their headwaters in the Canadian Rockies and are the second and third largest rivers respectively to drain to the west coast of North America. To the west of their headwaters, across the Rocky Mountain Trench, is a second belt of mountains, the Columbia Mountains, comprising the Selkirk, Purcell, Monashi and Caribou Mountain subranges. Immediately west of the Columbia Mountains is a large and rugged interior plateau, encompassing the Chilcotin and Caribou regions in central British Columbia the Fraser Plateau, the Nechaco Plateau further north, and also the Thompson Plateau in the south. The Peace River Valley in northeastern British Columbia is Canada's most northerly agricultural region, although it is part of the prairies. The dry, temperate climate of the Okanagan Valley in south-central British Columbia provides ideal conditions for fruit growing and a flourishing wine industry. The semi-arid belt of the southern interior also includes the Fraser Canyon, and Thompson, Nicola, Similkameen, Shushwap and Boundary regions and fruit growing is common in these areas also, and also in the west Kootenai. Between the plateau and the coast is the province's largest mountain range, the Coast Mountains. The Coast Mountains contain some of the largest temperate latitude dais fields in the world. On the south coast of British Columbia, Vancouver Island is separated from the mainland by the continuous Juan de Fuca, Georgia, and Johnston Straits. Those straits include a large number of islands, notably the Gulf Islands and Discovery Islands. North, near the Alaskan border, Haida Gwaii lies across Hokiti Strait from the north coast region into its north, across Dixon Entrance from southeast Alaska. Other than in the plateau regions of the interior and its many river valleys, most of British Columbia is coniferous forest. The only temperate rainforests in Canada are found along the Pacific coast in the Coast Mountains, on Vancouver Island, and on Haida Gwaii, and in the Caribou Mountains on the eastern flank of the plateau. The western cordillera continues northwards past the Liar River in northernmost British Columbia to include the Mackenzie and Selwyn Ranges which lean the far western northwest territories and the eastern Yukon Territory. West of them is the large Yukon Plateau and, west of that, the Yukon Ranges and St. Elias Mountains, which include Canada's and British Columbia's highest summits, Mount St. Elias in the Kluane region and Mount Fairweather in the Tatshenshini Osk region. The headwaters of the Yukon River, the largest and longest of the rivers on the Pacific Slope, lie in northern British Columbia at Atlan and Teslin Lakes. Western Canada has many volcanoes and is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire a system of volcanoes found around the margins of the Pacific Ocean. There are over 200 young volcanic centers that stretch northward from the Cascade Range to Yukon. They are grouped into five volcanic belts with different volcano types and tectonic settings. The northern Cordilleran Volcanic Province was formed by faulting, cracking, rifting, 
and the interaction between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. The Garibaldi Volcanic Belt was formed by subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate beneath the North American Plate. The Anaheim Volcanic Belt was formed as a result of the North American Plate sliding westward over the Anaheim Hotspot. The Chilcotin Group is believed to have formed as a result of back arc extension behind the Cascadia Subduction Zone. The Rango Volcanic Field formed as a result of subduction of the Pacific Plate beneath the North American Plate at the easternmost end of the Aleutian Trench. Volcanism has also occurred in the Canadian Shield. It contains over 150 volcanic belts, now deformed and eroded down to nearly flat plains, that range from 600 million to 2.8 billion years old. Many of Canada's major ore deposits are associated with Precambrian volcanoes. There are pillar lavas in the Northwest Territories that are about 2.6 billion years old and are preserved in the Cameron River volcanic belt. The pillar lavas in rocks over 2 billion years old in the Canadian Shield signify that great oceanic volcanoes existed during the early stages of the formation of the Earth's crust. Ancient volcanoes play an important role in estimating Canada's mineral potential. Many of the volcanic belts bear ore deposits that are related to the volcanism. While the largest part of the Canadian Arctic is composed of seemingly endless permafrost and tundra north of the tree line, it encompasses geological regions of varying types, the Arctic Cordillera, with the British Empire Range and the United States Range on Elsmere Island, contains the northernmost mountain system in the world. The Arctic Lowlands and Hudson Bay Lowlands comprise a substantial part of the geographic region often designated as the Canadian Shield in contrast to the sole geologic area. The ground in the Arctic is mostly composed of permafrost, making construction difficult and often hazardous, and agriculture virtually impossible. The Arctic, when defined as everything north of the tree line, covers most of Nunavut and the northernmost parts of Northwest Territories, Yukon, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec and Labrador. Canada holds vast reserves of water, its rivers discharge nearly 9% of the world's renewable water supply, it contains a quarter of the world's wetlands, and it has the third largest amount of glaciers, after Antarctica and Greenland. Because of extensive glaciation, Canada hosts more than 2 million lakes of those that are entirely within Canada, more than 31,000 are between an area, while 563 are larger than. Canada's two longest rivers are the Mackenzie, which empties into the Arctic Ocean and drains a large part of northwestern Canada, and the St. Lawrence, which drains the Great Lakes and empties into the Gulf of St. Lawrence. The Mackenzie is over in length while the St. Lawrence is over in length. Rounding out the ten longest rivers within Canada are the Nelson, Churchill, Peace, Fraser, North Saskatchewan, Ottawa, Athabasca and Yukon Rivers. The Atlantic watershed drains the entirety of the Atlantic provinces, parts of the Quebec-Labrador border are fixed at the Atlantic Ocean-Arctic Ocean Continental Divide, most of inhabited Quebec and large parts of southern Ontario. It is mostly drained by the economically important St. Lawrence River and its tributaries, notably the Saguenay, Manicouagan and Ottawa Rivers. The Great Lakes and Lake Nipigon are also drained by the St. Lawrence. The Churchill River and St. John River are other important elements of the Atlantic watershed in Canada. The Hudson Bay watershed drains over a third of Canada. It covers Manitoba, northern Ontario and Quebec, most of Saskatchewan, southern Alberta, southwestern Nunavut and the southern half of Baffin Island. This basin is most important in fighting drought in the prairies and producing hydroelectricity, especially in Manitoba, northern Ontario and Quebec. Major elements of this watershed include Lake Winnipeg, Nelson River, the North Saskatchewan and South Saskatchewan Rivers, Assiniboine River, and Nettling Lake on Baffin Island. Wollaston Lake lies on the boundary between the Hudson Bay and Arctic Ocean watersheds and drains into both. It is the largest lake in the world that naturally drains in two directions. The Continental Divide in the Rockies separates the Pacific Watershed in British Columbia and Yukon from the Arctic and Hudson Bay Watersheds. This watershed irrigates the agriculturally important areas of inner British Columbia, such as the Okanagan and Kootenay Valleys, and is used to produce hydroelectricity. Major elements are the Yukon, Columbia and Fraser Rivers. The northern parts of Alberta, Manitoba, and British Columbia most of Northwest Territories in Nunavut, and parts of Yukon are drained by the Arctic watershed. This watershed has been little used for hydroelectricity, with the exception of the Mackenzie River, the longest river in Canada. The Peace, Athabasca, and Liar Rivers, as well as Great Bear Lake and Great Slave Lake, respectively the largest and second largest lakes wholly enclosed by Canada, 
are significant elements of the Arctic watershed. Each of these elements eventually merges with the Mackenzie, thereby draining the vast majority of the Arctic watershed. The southernmost part of Alberta drains into the Gulf of Mexico through the Milk River and its tributaries. The Milk River originates in the Rocky Mountains off Montana, then flows into Alberta, then returns into the United States, where it is drained by the Missouri River. A small area of southwestern Saskatchewan is drained by Battle Creek, which empties into the Milk River. Canada has produced a Biodiversity Action Plan in response to the 1992 International Accord. The plan addresses conservation of endangered species in certain habitats. The main biomes of Canada are Canada is divided into 10 provinces and 3 territories. According to Statistics Canada, 72.0% of the population is concentrated within of the nation's southern border with the United States, 70.0% live south of the 49th parallel, and over 60% of the population lives along the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River between Windsor, Ontario, and Quebec City. This leaves the vast majority of Canada's territory as sparsely populated wilderness. Canada's population density is 3.5 people slash km, 9.1 slash me, among the lowest in the world. Despite this, 79.7% .7 of Canada's population resides in urban areas, where population densities are increasing. Canada shares with the U.S. the world's longest undefended border at, R with Alaska. The Danish island dependency of Greenland lies to Canada's northeast, separated from the Canadian Arctic islands by Baffin Bay and Davis Strait. The French islands of Saint-Pierre and Miquelon lie off the southern coast of Newfoundland in the Gulf of St. Lawrence and have a maritime territorial enclave within Canada's exclusive economic zone. Canada also shares a land border with Denmark, as maps released in December 2006 show that the agreed-upon boundaries run through the middle of Hans Island. Canada's geographic proximity to the United States has historically bound the two countries together in the political world as well. Canada's position between the Soviet Union, now Russia, and the U.S. was strategically important during the Cold War since the route over the North Pole and Canada was the fastest route by air between the two countries and the most direct route for intercontinental ballistic missiles. Since the end of the Cold War, there has been growing speculation that Canada's Arctic maritime claims may become increasingly important if global warming melts the ice enough to open the Northwest Passage. Similarly, the disputed, and tiny, Hans Island, with Denmark, in the Nares Strait between Ellesmere Island and northern Greenland, may be a flashpoint for challenges to overall claims of Canadian sovereignty in the Arctic. Canada's abundance of natural resources is reflected in their continued importance in the economy of Canada. Major resource-based industries are fisheries, forestry, agriculture, petroleum products and mining. The fisheries industry has historically been one of Canada's strongest. Unmatched cod stocks on the Grand Banks off Newfoundland launched this industry in the 16th century. Today these stocks are nearly depleted, and their conservation has become a preoccupation of the Atlantic provinces. On the west coast, tuna stocks are now restricted. The less depleted, but still greatly diminished, salmon population continues to drive a strong fisheries industry. Canada claims a territorial sea, a contiguous zone of an exclusive economic zone of in a continental shelf of or to the edge of the continental margin. Forestry has long been a major industry in Canada. Forest products contribute one-fifth of the nation's exports. The provinces with the largest forestry industries are British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec. 54% of Canada's land area is covered in forest. The boreal forests account for four-fifths of Canada apostrophes forestland. 5% of Canada's land area is arable none of which is for permanent crops. 3% of Canada's land area is covered by permanent pasture stock. Canada has 7,200 square kilometers, 2,800 miles, of irrigated land, 1993 estimate. Agricultural regions in Canada include the Canadian prairies, the lower mainland and various regions within the interior of British Columbia, the St. Lawrence Basin and the Canadian Maritime Stock. Main crops in Canada include flax, oats, wheat, maize, barley, sugar beets and rye in the prairies, flax and maize in western Ontario, oats and potatoes in the Maritimes. Fruit and vegetables are grown primarily in the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia, southwestern Ontario, the Golden Horseshoe region of Ontario, along the south coast of Georgian Bay and in the Okanagan Valley of British Columbia. Cattle and sheep are raised in the valleys and plateaus of British Columbia. Cattle, sheep and hogs are raised on the prairies, cattle and hogs in western Ontario. 
sheep and hogs in Quebec, and sheep in the Maritimes. There are significant dairy regions in central Nova Scotia, southern New Brunswick, the St. Lawrence Valley, northeastern Ontario, southwestern Ontario, the Red River Valley of Manitoba, and the valleys in the British Columbia interior, on Vancouver Island, and in the Lower Mainland. Fossil fuels are a more recently developed resource in Canada, with oil and gas being extracted from deposits in the western Canadian sedimentary basin since the mid-1900s. While Canada's crude oil deposits are fewer, technological developments in recent decades have opened up oil production in Alberta's oil sands to the point where Canada now has some of the largest reserves of oil in the world. In other forms, Canadian industry has a long history of extracting large coal and natural gas reserves. Canada's mineral resources are diverse and extensive. Across the Canadian Shield and in the north there are large iron, nickel, zinc, copper, gold, lead, molybdenum, and uranium reserves. Large diamond concentrations have been recently developed in the Arctic, making Canada one of the world's largest producers. Throughout the Shield there are many mining towns extracting these minerals. The largest, and best known, is Sudbury, Ontario. Sudbury is an exception to the normal process of forming minerals in the shield since there is significant evidence that the Sudbury Basin is an ancient meteorite impact crater. The nearby, but less known Temigami magnetic anomaly has striking similarities to the Sudbury Basin. Its magnetic anomalies are very similar to the Sudbury Basin, and so it could be a second metal rich impact crater. The shield is also covered by vast boreal forests that support an important logging industry. Canada's many rivers have afforded extensive development of hydroelectric power. Extensively developed in British Columbia, Ontario, Quebec, and Labrador, the many dams have long provided a clean, dependable source of energy. Continuous permafrost in the north is a serious obstacle to development. Cyclonic storms form east of the Rocky Mountains, a result of the mixing of air masses from the Arctic, Pacific, and North American interior and produce most of the country's rain and snow east of the mountains. Air pollution and resulting acid rain severely affects lakes and damages forests. Metal smelting, coal-burning utilities, and vehicle emissions impact agricultural and forest productivity. And ocean waters are becoming contaminated from agricultural, industrial, mining, and forestry activities. Global climate change and the warming of the polar region will likely cause significant changes to the environment, including loss of the polar bear, the exploration for resource then the extraction of these resources and an alternative transport route to the Panama Canal through the Northwest Passage. The northernmost point within the boundaries of Canada is Cape Columbia, Ellesmere Island, Nunavut. The northernmost point of the Canadian mainland is Zenith Point on Boothia Peninsula, Nunavut. The southernmost point is Middle Island, in Lake Erie, Ontario, 41 degrees 41 n, 82 degrees 40 w. The southernmost water point lies just south of the island, on the Ontario Ohio border, 41 degrees 40 35 n. The southernmost point of the Canadian mainland is Point Pelee, Ontario. The westernmost point is Boundary Peak 187, 60 degrees 18 22.929 n. 141 degrees 007.128 W, at the southern end of the Yukon Alaska border, which is roughly following 141 degrees W but leans very slightly east as it goes north. The easternmost point is Cape Spear, Newfoundland, 47 degrees 31 N, 52 degrees 37 W. The easternmost point of the Canadian mainland is Elijah Point, Cape St. Charles, Labrador, 52 degrees 13 N, 55 degrees 37 W. The lowest point is sea level at 0 meters, whilst the highest point is Mount Logan, Yukon, at 5,959 meters, 19,550 feet. The Canadian Pole of Inaccessibility is allegedly near Jackfish River, Alberta, latitude, 59 degrees 260 N, longitude, 112 degrees 4960 W. The furthest straight line distance that can be traveled to Canadian points of land is between the southwest tip of Cloane National Park and Reserve, next to Mount St. Elias, and Cripple Cove, NL, near Cape Race, at a distance of. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.